I come to you today with an announcement. We will now be searching for a new host to sit alongside my beloved brother, comrade in arms and dear friend of Osman Takim. I have reached capacity as to being on camera. If you wonder why we don't have enough camera episodes, it's my fault. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take the blame for it. So depending on how this one goes, submit your resume. Nah, we gonna thug it out. I'm here. Dialectics. He was giving me a speech on dialectics prior to this, where it ain't always about what you want to do. It's about what you need to do. And so if I say that I am, I don't know, I guess if y'all consider me a decent host, if a boss says I'm a decent host, then I'll keep doing my part to spread truth. What is Freedom People Press tagline? Speaking truth to the new African struggle. That's what we here to do. And we've been doing it for 149 episodes, which will, we will record 150 right after this. Damn, my brother. You're telling, you hey. telling, you telling the game, man. Hey, <laughs> man, 150? Man, <laughs> We're about to be 150, huh? Yeah. That's wild. I remember when we hit 100. Now we're about to be on 150. Yep. Which is really, you know, if you break it down, 172, right? Oh, because of Tales of the Town? 62, my brother? It's okay. Sound it out, baby. Don't let me tell people. <laughs> but yeah, 162. Yes, that's a lot a lot of episodes. Yeah. Um, we did that workshop yesterday, and they pointed out to us, because they asked us what year we started, 2016. Yeah. <clears throat> Seven years of doing this pod, bro. That's a long time of podcasting, mm -hmm. especially the game of podcasting and what it's become right now. In terms of uh, a lot of people launching podcasts, a lot of people launching their political shows, just even the evolution of uh, uh, video podcasts to some degree, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Uh, but hey, I, I say we, we've been here doing this, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we uh, appreciate all the support of our uh, supporters all over the years, you know what I'm saying? I, I feel like uh, you can see our growth in terms of our political analysis, you can see our growth as, uh, as two people mm -hmm. and evolving and, and transforming and growing. Uh, because that's what we have to do day in and day out is evolve, transform, and grow. And I appreciate everybody who has been with us on this show who have grown with us at the same time and expanded their consciousness, you feel me, developed into uh, new beings because that's what we have to do. We have to transform from this colonial mentality that we are stuck in and move towards a revolutionary mentality, uh, a colonial question. condition uh, to a revolutionary condition. So episode 149, it's a, it's a big number. I think it's a testament to the commitment that we have in terms of producing uh, accessible political education. I would also say it's a, a testament to looking at how we've done the show and understanding what changes that we do have to make as well. You know, this is in terms of like the video content and being on camera and understanding yeah. that people want to be on camera and, you know, trying to do that as much as we can given the uh, lack of resources that were afforded. You know what I'm saying? Lack of resources. Or you could also say, you know, because of all the organizing that we is doing, it takes a different uh, type of toll. You know, we ain't just here podcasting. We ain't here just, uh, you know, launching breaking news. What we're doing is organizing uh, and building programs for decolonization, ultimately uh, to help us free the land from Euro-American control, to help us develop true independence, true sovereignty, uh, and true nationhood. Because what is independence, independence uh, without land? And lastly, I definitely want to give a shout out to are the folks at People's Programs, the members of People's Programs, and the volunteers of People's Programs who have uh, stepped up in a multitude of ways that have allowed Abbas and I to dedicate more time to uh, research and study that allows us to provide a more precise uh, analysis to any given topic that we're, that we're studying. And so uh, I'm of the thought that as the organization continues to grow, that as uh, members and volunteers <laughs> develop their analysis, develop their act, their actual uh, on the ground and practical skills to run the multiple programs that we run, um, you will see an uptake in uh, revolutionary thought and analysis as it pertains to our specific understanding of the new African independence movement, right? Not to say that there aren't, uh, there's a lot of, you know, like black media out there for sure, but you know, for us, we're, we're pushing a specific line of a uh, anti-capitalist, anti-imperialism, um, and revolutionary nationalism, right? That's what we push in, and we are of the understanding that uh, theoretically, what we're trying to do here is is important. Uh, and so, yeah, thank thanks to all the folks that support the work. Thanks to all the members. Um, I don't know if we said it already, but if you can 
uh, share, continue to share our podcast with folks. Thanks to all the people who have given us uh, recent um, what you reviews, call it? reviews, recent patrons, yeah, subscriptions, <laughs> and um, yeah, support us at patreon.com backslash hella black pod. I am deeming us as the people's podcast, so support the people's podcast, definitely the new podcast. African people's podcast. Say that for sure, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're trying to be a, a podcast uh, for humanity, though, you know what I'm saying? Because we're trying to actually actualize the words that we are speaking and create. Meaningful change in this world at the same time, I ain't just talking to talk. You know, we was talking to the kids yesterday when we was doing the workshop. Like, hey, you know, we were talking to talk of the podcast early on when we first mm-hmm. started the podcast, but didn't have no program to back it up. You know, and seeing that as like part of our contradiction is like, okay, sure. we are trying to uh, tell stories. You feel me? Uh, educate people so that they can transform their day to day reality, go from one state of living to a higher state of living. Because the way we is living right now, we could look outside and see that everything is wrong. Everything about this society, <laughs> the, the foundation of this society is wrong. But how are we going to make that change? You know, and, and we say, you got to, uh, Jalil say, rather, you got to free your mind, so ask a follow. And this is what we're trying to do on this podcast is, is help give you the tools to free your mind, to develop that consciousness, and then to put that consciousness into reality. And that's where a, a material transformation happens. So, you know, we're going to get into it, you know, but... Uh, Definitely appreciate all all the support. You know, go follow us on Instagram at Hell Black Pod. You feel me? If you can't become a patron, uh, support us on Instagram. Support us on Twitter. Follow us. Retweet. If we post an episode, you feel me? Make sure y'all tag us and we'll repost that on our Hell Black Pod Instagram. You know what I'm saying? So engage with us. Uh, we enjoy it when y'all comment. You feel me? Sometimes when we do these uh, episodes, it's like we put it out into into you know air <laughs> you don't really know who listened to it you know we know we get in these plays we know the different countries we know we're charting in different countries and whatnot but we don't always get that uh, uh comment or the feedback you know so uh i know i appreciate uh when y'all engage with us you know what i'm saying it makes it uh seem more uh interactive for us or for myself uh, so, you know yeah for sure so episode 149 we're gonna talk that talk um if you haven't had a chance to listen to episode 148, where we uh, give a historical understanding of uh, what led to this height of the conflict between uh, the unjust state of Israel and the people who will be free of Palestine, um, I suggest you go back and dive into that because this episode will be somewhat of a revisiting of that. But also touching on some of the, um, I would guess, like themes and elements we didn't get to cover uh, in the previous episode, while perf- uh, giving analysis on some of the um, more recent developments, uh, and definitely want to start by saying free the land, free <laughs> Palestine. It ain't a, it's like uh, Kwame Ture say, it's it's science. It's gonna happen. It ain't a matter of, uh, it's just a matter of how and when. But but people will be free. It's gonna happen. Yeah, that's a fact. That's that's the fact of the matter. Now it's, it's going to happen. Uh, the youth of the world are going to decide that it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even in America, uh, the youth, for the most part, uh, the younger dem- demographics don't support Israel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I've seen something. Uh, I've seen a tweet. I've been on uh, the or the, the X world, Twitter world, mm-hmm. <laughs> a bit more with trying to get you know information out and uh, getting information too. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it was someone who tweeted like, oh, my, my 15-year-old cousin couldn't go to a protest and they had a protest on like Roblox or something like that, which was like a game, and it was just yeah, a yeah. bunch of uh, characters riding like riding around with a Palestinian flag and stuff. So it's like even the youth, like that was just a moment for me. I'm like, oh yeah, it's over. Like a small moment like that, seeing that like kids on these apps, on these apps, you know, leading a protest on the app because they can't go outside and protest. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, it's game over for the Zionists. It's game over for Israel. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's what we what we speak to. Uh, if you haven't, you should go to uh, peoplesprograms.com and check out the writing, sec- writing section. Uh, and there's a piece, Rep- Repression Raises Consciousness, which is born out of, uh, I would say, essay an essay by Huey P. Newton. Um, and his, you can look that in the Huey P. Newton Reader, uh, where we talk about that there's only so much you can do to a people, so much oppression and repression you can do to a people before they start to uh, essentially question their reality and also, uh, most importantly, fight back. 
by whatever means are at their disposal, right? That's just what I've come to understand as human nature. There's very, oh, even talking about humans, I think like animal nature, right? Like mammals, like there's very few animals that you can just push into a corner and won't do anything. Like very few people who just go into the corner and like submit. Like you, you, even your most uh, precious dog or cat, you put them in the corner for too long, they like, gonna start yeah. to strike back, right? Yeah. And so you dealing, we dealing with at the end of the day, uh, human instincts, animal instincts, uh, and so we understand that repression, whether it be uh, state state sanctioned violence by way of the police or by uh, public health disparities or environmental racism, like we experience in West Oakland, uh, whether it be open air prisons like you get in the Gaza Strip, right? Whether you get the illegal occupation of the West Bank, whether you get the NAPCA, the Nexa, right? All these things we're going to talk about. Eventually, come on, my dog. <laughs> People going to fight back. That's what happens. People always been fighting back. <laughs> always been fighting back. And this struggle has reached a historic stage, right? Where the ignorance of the Zionists, the ignorance of the Israelis, the ignorance of the Americans, the ignorance of the Europeans is being matched by the steadfastness, the faith, of the Palestinians, uh, the axis of resistance, uh, deciding that it's enough is enough and that the people are going to unify, <laughs> the people are going to going to decide that a new day is going to be born and mm-hmm. that new day is when Palestine will be free. Yep. Ultimately, the will of the people is being enacted through struggle, through resistance, right? And we understand that according to international law, that all of this is legal. Settler colonies are illegal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Genocide is illegal, right? And according to international law, colonized people have uh, the right to use any means necessary, all and any means necessary, to stop from being colonized, to stop the genocide, mm-hmm. right? So we're seeing this historic, uh, historic time in history. You know, where I was talking to one of my OGs, he's like, yeah, you know, when we was uh, doing this free Palestine stuff back in the day, like I would have never imagined that this day would have happened right now, back then. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's a it's a testament to the will of the Palestinian people. It's a testament to the will of the axis of resistance, uh, and you know, Palestine will be free. It's not a question of if anymore. It's it will. <laughs> That's a fact. Um, if we're going to talk about the Palestinian situation, uh, we first need to be able to define. Um, the material uh, occupational force that is the contradiction of, of Israel and its political ideology of, of Zionism. And we need to define it in its relationship or lack of relationship to uh, Judaism because a lot of the Western propaganda that we're seeing, um, which we've come to understand as a method of fascism, right, where uh, people will shift the narrative to um, making this as if this is a, a fight, or not a fight, I guess an attack on the Jewish religion, because that's what Judaism is, a religion, it's not a race, but people have uh, post the Holocaust, right, really turn this into, um, yeah, making it into an ethnic, I mean, yeah, they, based on their uh, settler colonial practices, turn it into an ethnic group, right, but that's neither here, that is here nor there. Uh, my, my question being, right, um, is Judaism Zionism, right? We have to, uh, how would you uh, define it? Well, there is no religious basis for a Zionist Israeli nation state. There is no religious basis in the Torah. There's plenty of uh, rabbis of Orthodox Jews who follow the Torah and are uh, opposed to Zionism mm-hmm. because they're nowhere in the Torah does it say you can set up a, a fascist, uh, racist uh Ethno state mm-hmm. based off of the Torah, right? So, from a religious perspective, it's completely uh, forbidden based off of the Torah. Mm-hmm. At the same time, Zionism is a religious movement of Jews, pseudo, right? A pseudo religious mm-hmm. movement, right? I, that's why I say pseudo because it is is not based off the Torah, but it is using the Torah. So, not like, based off their religious text, but uh, manipulating the it's religious manipulating text. the re- religious text for their political movement. But mm-hmm. it also comes from certain uh, theological misinterpretation or using theology uh, to put it into a material reality of a nation state of a genocidal nation state. So you mm-hmm. did have rabbis early on uh, play a role in terms of the early development uh, of Zionism, right? But, that's but what you any, also had yeah. people reject it, right? Uh, the opposite of that. I was so say, that's with any kind of religious crusade, right? Whether you talk about the Catholic Church uh, and... Uh, is it Pope Alexander and his decrees, right? Um, uh, that's 
Boy, that Again, so it's a product of Europe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a product of Europe's problem. It's a product of European fascism and people being discriminated, but also, you know, Jewish people were discriminated in Europe. That is a fact. For sure. Right? Uh, and at the same time, this movement came from that and then wanted to have a discrimination, a genocidal movement against Palestinians. Right? So it isn't true to the Torah. But Zionism but the same was being time, pushed before the Holocaust. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Right. Uh, it was pushed before the Holocaust, yeah. right? But that was a product of like discrimination of Jews in Europe, right? Well, that's why I say Got it's you. a Europe problem yeah, yeah. because Europeans, other white people, <laughs> were discriminating against Jews. That's, Just dealing with people that confuse what you said with okay. like, okay, this is born out of the Holocaust, which oh, I would yeah. say it grew like new legs post, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. But yeah, right. So uh, understanding that historical position, but I think people will say, oh, Zionism is secular. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> it does use religion it uh uses judaism right it uses I mean, jewish people flag. to push it look right it's really flat this also has certain implications of them wanting to cause the rapture <laughs> you know what i'm saying like they're but people will deny that reality under the name of quote-unquote dialectical and historical materialism they're like oh you know sometimes these atheists will just be like oh no it's this is just all about this uh, is strictly economic. political no this is economic this yeah. is you feel me like this is actually uh a pseudo jewish movement uh to set up a so-called Jewish nation state at the expense of Muslims, at the expense of Palestinians, uh, at the expense of Arabs, at the expense of Afri- the African world as well. Yeah, It's a, a political, military, uh, economic front uh, for the West, right? Israel was created by these pan-Europeans uh, to benefit the interests of pan-Europeanism, uh, to benefit, uh, at that time, the so-called British Empire. They needed a nation state to be able to carry out the will of the British Empire, right? Where there's top dogs to imperialism and then there's runts. One of them runts is Ukraine, right? But the top dog of imperialism at that time when the so-called nation state of Israel was created uh, was the British Empire. Now it has evolved into the United States of America becoming this pan-European top dog, right? Uh, And it uses, the and it's set up, and it is the material impact of it Right, the day-to-day operations is to exploit Palestinians, is to steal the resources, uh, is to commit acts of genocide, and to advance the interests of this economic, military superstructure of Pan-Europeanism uh, and NATO. Right, that's that's what's going on right here. Uh, it's meant to contain West Asia to the interests of Europe, to the interests of Euro America. Right, it's meant to contain Africa. Right, <laughs> uh, North Africa, uh, East Africa. Right. Uh, the African continent in different ways as well, right? Because of its uh, geopolitical uh, location, its geopolitical relevance, yeah. right? So it's a, it uses religion. It has a religious element to it. I say a pseudo-religious element because there's no basis in the Torah, but we can't erase the uh, <laughs> Zionist Jews going up until the Al-Aqsa Mosque, you feel me, and doing their uh, Talmudic rituals, right? So there's this uh, religious element to it uh, that can't be denied. I say pseudo again, but uh, it's playing a role, right? I would say that, but Zionism has no basis in the Torah, yeah. no basis. And there's a lot of Jewish people who are anti-Zionist, right? There's also Christians <laughs> who are Zionist. Joe Biden's like, I'm a Zionist. He ain't Jewish, right? So uh, you could also say uh, <laughs> uh, some of these Arab nations, you know, and they leaders are Zionist. Yeah. What did we talk about when a, a, a Saudi... Uh, Yemen launches a, a missile and the Americans and then the Saudi uh, take out the missiles. That protecting are, Zionism. It's protecting Zionism. So uh, it is a religious aspect, a religious element alongside the interests of pan-Europeanism. Right? The same way the Crusades, they're like, okay, this is our economic, there's economic interests that we have right now to protect the quote-unquote church. Mm-hmm. And they put a cross in front of it. Yeah. So there was that element of it uh, and that I think sometimes people don't want to discuss that. Yeah. Uh, the biggest takeaways I'm getting from this is Judaism is one of the world's oldest religions. Uh, and Zionism. African. Yeah. <laughs> there are Af- we was watching a movie the other day. It was like, you ever heard of the African Jews? <laughs> right? <laughs> is it African? Is an uh, and one of the world's oldest religions? Right. Uh, and Zionism 
is a political ideology and objective that was born out of the 19th century, pushed by Theodore Herzl, right, which which sought to establish a Eastern European Jewish settler colonial state. These are just the facts. And these are not our words. These are their words, right? <laughs> well, you talk about the what you mentioned in our last episode, the Belfort Declaration, right, where uh, Arthur Belfort, the, the British Secretary of State, said that I will support the establishment of a Jewish uh, settler colonial nation, right? Because if you look at in the 1900s, there is no free territory. The world is already spoken for. Uh, and in, in that time period, uh, Western Europe is pretty much uh, colonizing the entire world, yeah. right? So the only way that the Jewish settler state can be um, produced is through coalition with the Western European world. That's just it's historical facts. facts. And yeah. see, in present day, we're seeing the coalition of the Eastern European Jewish settler state and the Western Euro- European world. And I do want to state one last thing, because people might uh, siphon through what you said and miss this key part. You did say, in fact, that uh, there was persecution and oppression of Jewish people. You're not denying that. But what we can't do is frame uh, Palestinian resistance against Eastern European Jewish settler colonialism, Zionism, as an anti-Jewish movement, right? And so I want to ask you, what is the power behind framing this situation as religious persecution? And also, why isn't this same... uh, I guess, like, outlook being applied to all the Muslims that are being killed? Uh, the f- first thing is the Western world hates Muslims. The Western world hates Islam. Euro Christianity hates Islam, right? Even if we look at the formation of the Zionist state of Israel, it was because they needed to contain the Ottoman Empire. Europe needed to contain the expansion of the Muslim world, the uh, self-governance of the Muslim world. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we look at that as a a historical fact uh, that also plays a very significant role uh, in this conflict. Right. No, I won't even call it. It's not a conflict. It's a genocide. (laughs) Right. Uh, So if we look at that and then compare it from the media's use of the Holocaust, you turn on the news and you would think that it was the Muslims who was responsible (laughs) for the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. You see the news. uh, compare Hamas to Nazi Germany, right? Like I said, Europe did this. (laughs) Europe did this to Jewish people, right? It wasn't the Muslims who did it, right? The world stood up and fought for that. (laughs) World War II happened (laughs) to stop the Holocaust, right? And then what happens in turn is that no one can say anything in criticizing this nation state of Israel that it was set up under (laughs) <laughs> a genocidal claim uh, to a genocidal pseudo religious claim to land that puts Europeans that were victims of the Holocaust and then takes them to another land and puts them in a land and says that they have the right to that land and then exterminate a by people any means by any means necessary. Like what type of sick thing is that? That this terrible event event happened in humanity. This terrible event happened in humanity, and then these pan European powers said, okay. Let's now use this to advance our interests. Let's put uh, European Jews in Palestine and take this land over and commit an ethnic cleansing and genocide against Palestinians, against Rep- Muslims. Reparations and then you by can't way of genocide. Discuss anything without being saying you're anti Semitic. Which again, Palestinian people are a Semitic people. Just so not what white are we? Semitic, so I don't know. What, are, what are we really talking? And let's be honest: these European Ashkenazis are not Semitic. Semitic refers to what? A group of languages. <laughs> these are people from Europe who were speaking Polish and Russian. <laughs> they aren't the original Semitic people from a historical basis. If you do the ancestry DNA test, that ain't. What does that mean, right? So anti-Semitism has been uh, formed into something that is specific towards Jewish people. And yes, there has been a specific oppression. Uh, towards Jewish people but if we talk about Semitism and anti-Semitism and Semitic people in general that's Africans who are anti- who are Semitic people right it's uh, Arabs is people the West Asian world are Semitic people so what are we really talking about but what we have to understand is why you can't talk about it is because of the media <laughs> it's because of the United States of America it's because of the the powers and the entities of Western imperialism it's because of the the war the psychological psychological aspect of this war right it's controlled in the media this is war cnn msnbc 
Fox News. These are channels of war. Mm-hmm. These are channels that uplift uh, the political, social, and economic goals of Israel and the United States of America. Right. So we see the Zionist entity having deep control of the media and presenting it as objective facts. <laughs> right. You literally have people going on these news channels talking about we are beheading uh, uh, that talking about uh, Hamas is beheading children. You have the so-called president of the United States of America saying that Hamas is beheading children. You have. People calling them savages, <laughs> the Palestinian savages. You have people, you have these uh, Zionists calling them terrorists. You have Zionists saying that they should be exterminated, right? We have literally an ethnic cleansing being called for in the media by these, by CNN, by Fox News, by MSNBC. And who controls these entities? Zionists in your own America. And we also have to look at, in my opinion, how many uh, Zionists are up in the United States of America's government. How many just, Zionists are up in the, up. the corporations? Yeah. How many Zionists are actually in positions of power in this government? Like, let's look at it. Why, why is the, dire- the the CIA director David Zionist? Cohen. David Cohen, Blinken, Zionist. There's reports that Blinken is now ch- becoming a part of the Israeli uh, war cabinet. So, what is a what is a so called of okay? If we pretend for a second that we believe in America. <laughs> Why would an American official, a high-ranking official in the United States government, be joining the Israeli war cabinet? That's a whole other country. This is playing the exact role into this war and in terms of framing a narrative into creating a narrative that is justifying the genocide of Palestinian people. Right? And they could lie. They get on there and lie. They lied about uh, the bombing of the hospital. They first admitted to it, then they backtracked, and then they go on the media saying, no, we deny all out. It's so deny. insane how they can disrespect. Joe Biden could literally get on the, uh, have a whole speech and say, I have seen photos of Hamas beheading children. I never really thought that I would see and have confirmed pictures of terrorists beheading children. And then the White House slowly backtracks that lie slowly backtracks it, but that lie has spread so much now, even though they backtrack it, the American public, the so-called American public, believe it. I mean, it's already resonated. It already resonated. It already grew legs. All they need to do was say it. And they, <laughs> then they throw so much information at you, right? We were watching the, um, after the attack at the hospital. We were watching uh, the, what would you call it? I guess like the uh, news, the... Uh, conference that was held on it and you had this uh a zionist i believe it was it wasn't garland but it was someone from like um the israeli defense force uh, garland is the director is the attorney general or yeah what is the attorney general of uh, the united states of america right but there was some israeli was up there and he was like had all these like diaphragms and shit and it's like bro I, you're not a viable source of information just like just two days ago y'all was talking about hamas did this hamas did that and y'all backtracked on it uh, and we know especially for us as new Africans, the history of uh, United States uh, intelligence agencies and these police institutions uh, presenting false evidence Mm -hmm. at trials. I I can't take anything they put on TV, anything they put in front of us as the truth. I I can't take it as as the truth, period, point blank. But again, we recognize that the average person whose time is already spoken for, who spends an hour commuting Mm -hmm. to work, an hour commuting from work, 10 to 12 hour work days then has to go home and has about four mm-hmm. hours to themselves do they really have the ability to sit here and research and siphon through all this information to locate the objective facts or do they have 20 minutes to sit online and let their consciousness be downloaded which we'll get to a little bit lo- a little bit later but these are the questions we gotta start to ask ourselves if you really research your government <laughs> and look at these actors that are involved and who was doing what shows you that there is a Zionist control of this country. It's a fact. If we look at the Secretary of the Treasury, (laughs) Janet Yellen, Zionist. Mm -hmm. The head honcho of the United States of America, Joe Biden, Zionist. The Vice President of the United States of America, Kamala Harris, Zionist. Gavin Newsom, the Governor of California, Zionist. 
This one to Israel. Merrick Garland, like you was talking about, Attorney General, Attorney General Zionist. Yeah. <laughs> Alejandro Mayorakis, Secretary of Homeland Security, Zionist. Director of National Intelligence, <laughs> Zionist. White House Chief of Staff, Zionist. Anthony Blinken, Zionist. Wendy Sherman, Deputy Secretary of State, <laughs> Zionist. Secretary of State of Political Affairs, Victoria Newland, Zionist. The Office of Science and Technology Policy, Eric Lander, Zionist. These are the people who have told you that they stand by the declaration of that the Jewish European, the Jewish Eastern European settler state should be established by any means possible. So if you don't agree with genocide, why would you listen to anything that these people say? Why? Unless you agree with this genocide. This is just a short list. Yeah, this is just a, a very short list. Of very high people. people. <laughs> you very high people who are the We ain't even government. talking about the people who own the corporations. Who own a good year, who own a dove, who own an apple, who own these different mining companies. We ain't even talking about Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos. We're talking about these NFL team owners, these NBA team owners, these uh deans, right, of these universities, We're these board of directors Zionists, of these different nonprofits. Oh, it's, they they run deep. <laughs> we talking about millions of people, bro. We just we just talk about our country, this country. We ain't even talking about international. So makes you ask the question who's running things right now? The what assets does <laughs> the Zionists have in the United States of America? The Zionist influence in this country is deep. These are just facts, right? But when you call out the Zionist influence, you're labeled a certain way. Like Kwame Ture said, how could I be? Well, Kwame Ture talked about being anti-Zionist. You know, I'm anti-Zionist. How could I be uh, anti-Semitic when my people gave you the religion, Judaism? Right, so we have to be very clear about what this is. Very clear, because Zionism itself is anti-Semitic. Zionism itself does forced sterilization on Ethiopian Jews, on African Jews. Zionism has killed Iraqi Jews. Zionism, the the IDF even beats Orthodox. Jews in the Zionist state of Israel. What I want to tell you right now is that the last two NBA commissioners, Adam Silver is the current commissioner, David Stern was his predecessor. These are two people, two Jewish Americans who support the state of Israel. Zionists. Zionists. Again, Judaism is a religion. Zionism is a political objective. If you are a Jewish person who supports the state of Israel, the unjust state of Israel, you are a Zionist. If you are a new African born in fucking Temecula, Washington, and you support the unjust state of Israel, you are a Zionist. If you are a Filipino and you live in fucking uh, South Central, Los Angeles, and you support the unjust state of Israel, you You're are a Zionist. Zionist. So again, just define, redefine yeah. Zionism. No, exactly. People. David Stern and Adam Silver, last two NBA commissioners, support Zionism. That makes very clear mm -hmm. sense why LeBron James would tweet out what he tweets. It's just come mm -hmm. on, my nigga. Who we got? Who run? Who's running things? So now we got the facts. Uh, you know, that's one thing we're trying to do is give people the facts, present them. You do your own research if you don't believe us. And present them, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, what do these facts mean as it pertains to Western imperialism? When we started this outline, which was maybe a day or two ago, at that time, I believe uh, over 5,000 Palestinians have been killed since October 7th, um, mostly uh, women and children. Uh, recently, the UN Security Council uh, voted against a ceasefire, which I'm going to let you uh, speak to to speak about the ceasefire a little bit later. Um, the UN Commissioner of Human Rights uh, gave a warning against ethnic cleansing. Right, uh, this is on the United Nations website. Right, uh, of the UN Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights warned, and I quote: "Palestinians are in grave danger of mass ethnic cleansing." This is coming from 
This is not our, our words, this is their words, right? This is their international govern, governing bodies that they created to protect the world uh, and install peace, right? And peace and justice, this is what they're saying. Uh, and in the, U, the latest USA package uh, from the United States to Israel uh, included $3.7 billion for the State Department to strengthen Israel's military and enhance security at the U.S. Embassy, right? So all the money that's being funneled uh, into Israel, uh, the neglect for human life, um, the rejecting of the claims, not even rejecting, I guess ignoring the claims from their international governing body, governing body warning the U.S. of its complicity uh, in genocide. I think this is um, in addition to the removal of electricity, all the churches that have been bombed, the hospitals, right? I think uh, this is a representation of the United States and Western imperialism really sticking to their philosophy uh, that the world is a place that is ripe for their domination uh, against the whole odds and by any means necessary. This is what the U.S. stands for, right? Uh, and I would say another fact based off these things is, is that the international world is once again being complicit in the genocide of Palestinians, right? Earlier in this episode, and in the last episode, we talked about the NAPCA, right? Which was 1947 to 1949 where you saw... Um, a hundred Palestinians, hundred thousand Palestinians killed. Reportedly, right? We don't know the exact number. Reportedly, a hundred thousand Palestinians killed, and uh, another seven hundred thousand forced to relocate. And then you have the Nexa uh, in '67, where you have another, uh, I guess, another. I think like three hundred thousand Palestinians forced to, um, you know, find refuge. And so, from '47 to '67, over a million people removed in this uh the occupation of the west bank and of gaza right like this is just again speaking to the atrocities and i, I at some point the international world has to get real serious about its uh claims to wanting to see peace and harmony in the world uh and not letting western imperialist powers uh essentially Dictate. rape and pillage the world <laughs> You feel dictate me? the UN. Co you dictate know what I'm saying? The international and community. You spot on, bro. Like one of my things that I mean, it's basic common sense, but I would say like uh, it's time for new international institutions, bro. Uh, where you see the shift in power, right? Which is the first form of this, I guess, international governing body is what you would consider like the League of Nations, right? And then post League of Nations, post World War II, you have the United Nations, which is formed as a result of Europe being in shambles and the United States presenting itself as the new top dog because what the war wasn't fought on, wasn't fought on US soil. Right. And they came in at the end of the war when again uh, a lot of Western powers, uh, U European powers had lost uh, a lot of infrastructure and a lot of human life. Right. The United States is able to jump in on the bandwagon at the last minute and be presented as the saviors uh, based on their role in uh, the ending of World War II, right? And so with that power, the United States places this international governing body like the United Nations in New York. The, the settler colony. The a United Nations, you feel me? Founded on genocide, a land founded on the enslavement of African people. And so we... Not a land that is free. Period. And so you, you said it, bro, like we need new, institu new institutions that can actually serve as uh, international bodies, not uh, these Western fronts. Because that's all the United Nations is, is a Western front. Mm -hmm. That's all the uh, World Bank is and the International Monetary Fund. These are Western fronts that are designed to give Euro America, Western Europe, its power and uh, a monopoly mm -hmm. and stronghold on international relations. Yeah. And lastly... I would say it's actually time and it's time for people in their respective nations, which we'll get to in like solutions a little bit later, right? But it's time for people in their respective nations to get real serious about what they can contribute to justice, uh, right? Uh, like that, we have to get, we have to start asking ourselves questions because just like the United States is complicit based off of their, these are our taxpayer dollars. Hey, you pay taxes, it's your money. Jacqueline over there, pay taxes. I pay taxes. This is what that $3.7 billion is going to. And even if you don't want to pay taxes, everything you buy is taxed. You feel me? So we are complicit already based off of our economic mm -hmm. participation, right, which is unavoidable based off the monopoly mm -hmm. that they've put on the world, right? But, like, what are you going to do to combat what I would consider that negativity you're putting out into the world? What are you going to do to combat that injustice you put into the world? And we're going to come with some solutions at the end. Um, but again, we recognize here in the U.S. it's hard for us to get serious when what we we are bombarded with propaganda. What happened last night? Game one of uh, the opening of the NBA season. Everyone glued to their TV. 
Uh, who controls these networks? What's what's the about to, American Zionist superpowers? What's what's about to happen soon? The World Series. We are getting into the second quarter of the NFL football season. So you about to have the playoff race for the NFL. You're having the NBA start. The NBA now has a midseason tournament. You got all these movies coming out. The, the uh, the strike just ended in Hollywood. You know, I'm like the Western life is already so much about distraction that when we sit back and ask, how did this? How did we let this happen? Well, you were too busy watching TV. You, you were too happen. busy yeah. getting drunk. You were too busy partying. Going you to feel the me? Club. Like these are the things we 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 did. And so, like, not to be um, holier than thou, nothing like that. I'm just saying we got to start to question I mean, we have, what we gonna we do. We have to identify the problem, and right? we're gonna pose real solutions at the end. But you know, this is just. Again, if you ask me what the facts means, the facts means that uh, the West is dedicated to world imperialism, the same world imperialism that it dedicated itself to in the 15th century when Pope, Allegra- when Pope Alexander uh, signed those decrees, right? The same uh, Western imperialism that the West was dedicated to when the, per- when the Portuguese uh, set foot on the African continent uh, in the 15th century, when Christopher Columbus stepped foot on this continent. Uh, and... Shit, when the Berlin Conference happened of 1884 to 1885, right? These is, this is just the same philosophy. When the Belfort Declaration happened, when the United Nations partitioned um, Palestine into Israel and Palestine, when uh, the unjust state of Israel is officially declared in 1948, these are all born of the same history, the same philosophy, which says Europe, European, American nations will run the world govern the world by any means necessary and we as people got to ask ourselves what are we going to do to combat it mm-hmm. that's a fact I very mean, simple. especially uh you know people were talking a bunch about bricks my question is what is brazil doing i my can tell you what they is... did they presented a uh so when the united i, don't, I guess when the ceasefire was presented at first right and you had uh, a few countries abstain, and then you had the United States was like vetoed it. No, right? Uh, a few members of the permanent cabinet, right, which is like France, China, Russia, United States, UK. I think it was like UK, France. Of course, the Western imperialist powers are like vetoed the shit. But then a few weeks later, a few days later, I think today, I think Brazil abstained from that vote. They either abstained or vetoed, and they did that because they uh, were going to present a proposal the following. Uh, I guess like a day or two later, and they presented a proposal which didn't call for a ceasefire, but calls for some type of gap, a pause in the armed conflict that would allow humanitarian aid to come through. And China vetoed that because they said it was too weak, right? It's just like, bro, why all you niggas is playing? What's happening? We just talk about motherfuckers is dying. Point I was going to make. <laughs> <laughs> like, like vetoes, uh, abstaining, all these things. Like, what's really going on? We talked about Governor Newsom going to Israel, and his next stop was to where? China. So what does that mean for China? How much interest does China have in Israel? You know, so what is this economic thing, superstructure of BRICS, when Saudi is doing what it's doing? Saudi was cooperating militarily with the Israelis and the Americans. So again, we got to <laughs> be very critical very critical of the international terrain and like you said it's people of the world rising up and that's what is happening i would say is you seeing the masses in a different way uh rise up in support of palestine that has not happened uh to this degree historically For right sure. so even these rulers of these nations they might do what they're doing uh but the people ultimately you know if the people rise up and determine that uh they're tired of their governments allowing u.s military occupations of their land then bases will go mm-hmm then bases will go. But some of these reactionary rulers have been installed by the West <laughs> and are controlled by the West. And when the West says bark, they bark. When the West says shoot down a missile, they shoot down a missile. So we have to be very clear about what's going on in the international terrain and, and uh, call <laughs> for the support and the freedom and independence uh, of Palestine. So all oppressed people of the world, that should be the call. Free Palestine and work to hold wherever you are. See how your government is complicit. See how your government funds uh, what's happening in Palestine. 
the genocide and works with and normalizes with the so-called state of Israel without question uh we've alluded to it throughout the episode right the role that media is playing and we've talked about the role that the media is playing in um positioning uh the resistance or the conflict um the Israeli and Palestinian conflict as um, a war against Jewish people. We've talked about the role that media has played in that. But what other downloads of like consciousness are you seeing in the West, right? Uh, and what would you consider like the biggest influence as it pertains? I guess what and how was this? Uh, I guess like manifesting as it pertains to analysis on like Israeli occupation and Palestinian resistance. Yeah, I want to answer this question more so from people who I think have good intentions mm -hmm. but are falling victims, uh, falling victim to the liberal aspect of what's going on. So these are people who, you know, uh, might say free Palestine and support Palestinians, uh, but are still victims of containment strategies, right? Victims mm -hmm. of psychological warfare being waged on the Internet, on the Zionist controlled <laughs> social media apps, right? So... One thing that I've been seeing a lot uh, in terms of what's happening in terms of the war right now is that people are saying, demand a ceasefire, 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 right? Some of these people are very well intentioned in their calls for a ceasefire, right? But we have to ask ourselves, where is this call coming from and who is making that call? You know what I'm saying? Because if the Palestinian resistance isn't making the call for a ceasefire, why are you calling for the ceasefire? Right? That's just a basic thing. If the joint operations room of the Palestinian resistance has not asked and made a very public call for a ceasefire, why are you doing that on the internet? Right. What would you say to people who say, what about the Palestinian, I, I haven't seen it, but uh, what about the Palestinian people who are out there saying they have no water, no electricity, which is very real? Uh, what about that? Then demand a, a open corridor to allow humanitarian aid. Right. So the two things don't have to the be two things don't be, have to be synonymous. Like we have to be very specific with our language, because if Israel, if the Palestinian resistance and the militant resistance that is happening hasn't called for that yet. Right. That means they think they're in a strategic position at this point to where it is not needed. Now, is humanitarian aid needed? Yes. Right. But if the resistance factions have not called for a ceasefire, then why are you calling for it? You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, humanitarian aid, what what you should do is say, end U.S. support of Israel. <laughs> like, that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. Because the ceasefire is going to do what? This, again, has been a historic operation. If they don't have the billions and billions of military aid, the change is real. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, I've seen that as a part of, like, a containment strategy in terms of uh, liberalizing is, is, is calling for this ceasefire, right? Uh, and a lot of this, I would say, comes from celebrities. Celebrities putting things out. You know, and people's, uh, for some reason, anytime a celebrity speaks out, they just want representation. They feel so good because a celebrity says something. You know, and you don't actually question what that celebrity is saying. The celebrity is putting out all these so-called demands. I mean, when did the joint operations room release demands? And then when did they make an infographic to post it on Instagram? You feel me? <laughs> and you're saying these are the demands of the people from Gaza? Well, I mean, this is what right? happens so this, when you're again, dealing with the people who don't really understand. This is what I mean, right? Name. We have to have like what I would say is media literacy. We mm -hmm. have to understand, and really, a social media literacy. You know what I'm saying? So for me, like when I'm seeing some of these things go on, uh, I would say I have a ability to siphon through what's real to some degree mm -hmm. and what's fake, right? Okay, if these demands are coming out, who wrote the demands? What organization is under it? Okay, or uh, who? Uh, uh, what is this organization? Where is it located? And now how are they the ones saying that the demands were made? Because the uh, resistance factions, the joint operations room, when they release something, it's very clear when it's released by them. <laughs> it's usually written in Arabic and it's written in English. <laughs> it starts with a very uh, specific way of uh, speaking. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It goes through channels. You can vet that information versus this infographic that you've seen your favorite celebrity post. Right? So it's a... Uh, being critical of what is being said, even if we perceive it initially to be good, perceive it initially to be a part uh, of the Palestinian resistance, of uh, supporting uh, and fighting for Palestinian rights, right? Because uh, a ceasefire in many ways 
if they're not calling for it, you can also be delegitimizing the militant resistance that the Palestinians is waging. You know what I'm saying? That the, the so access of resistance. It could be a method of ostracizing. It could be a method of yeah. saying, okay, you're still kind of buying into these uh, tropes of these violent uh, Islamic terrorists. Right. Oh, they need to be a ceasefire. Oh, it's this both sides. Oh, Hamas is this. Right. But again, mm-hmm. that's where when I was talking about earlier, how these little lies are being said, it's like, oh, people still might have that in their subconsciousness. Like, oh, ceasefire. Right. I could say, yeah, violence is terrible. War is terrible. But they're not asking for that. Right. The death is terrible. Right. Especially in the way it is happening. But they die regardless. Might as well die the, on your feet. So if there's <laughs> this historic resistance that's happening, uh, who are we to say when? And if and when they want it, right? They Typical when they American make that God complex. It's that exactly. It's the savior complex. It's all mm-hmm. I want because you want your life to go back to normal. Basically, I'm you tired basically, of seeing this shit. Like you basically want to go on Instagram <laughs> and be able to say whatever you want. You want to go be able to do that and feel not judged. You want this thing sense of normalcy mm-hmm. uh, without actually having a, a real investment into what's happening right now. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's uh, just being very critical. Being very critical is, is super important, right? Uh, and I would say. There's certain narratives that are being pushed on social media that are also very damaging as well. Uh, I would say this narrative, especially as it comes to like uh, gender and men, a lot of times you're hearing people um, on social media just say, oh, like the women and children of Palestine or the women and children. It's like, Mm -hmm. what about the men that is dying? What about the men that is uh, facing the same genocide that women and children? You feel me? What mm-hmm. about the men on the front lines? You know what I'm saying? Uh, waging this war. So it's kind of this uh, psychological aspect that, like, you only care because they're framing it as women and children. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a certain uh, uh, certain aspect of that is just completely buying into these, again, these tropes of a Muslim man. These tropes of a, a Muslim freedom fighter. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Being this violent type of uh, <laughs> person rather than being seen as a freedom fighter. A sacrificial lamb. You know what I'm saying? Who okay, these men, the you know what I'm saying? This is what they signed up for. This is what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like there's this uh, consciousness on the left that is being downloaded that is still playing into these very liberal uh, capitalist uh, understandings of what is going on, you know? Uh, and that's just, yeah. I mean, doesn't it make sense, stuff. though, when we're dealing with a, I will let us, if, hop, hypothetically, you're dealing with a room across the globe of the world's smartest people who literally understand how the mind works, who have an in-depth understanding of media sociology, right? The way that uh, people relate to media and the way that that media influences people's interactions mm-hmm. and relationships. I only read uh, the FBI World on Tupac Shakur, we talk about white malice where they were doing these, you know, MK Ultra, where people are literally studying the mind. Like, you don't, these people understand how our brains work more than we do. You don't know, it, it sounds conspiracy theories, mm-hmm. but like all these articles that come out about the FBI and the CIA and, yeah. their, and their integration into social media networks, like Twitter. What? Like they, they come out and tell you, and that's, that's why I say it's so disrespectful because they do it directly in front of your face mm-hmm. and you still question it. Yeah. It's well. Another thing that I've been seeing as well is these people uh, who claim to say they want the genocide stopping to stop the Israeli regime from uh, occupying the land of Palestinians. But at the same time, they be from the Western keyboards, from the Western chairs, uh, be saying that, uh, you know, a certain organization uh, should release hostages. Talking about Palestinian resistance needs to release American hostages. Talking about Palestinian resistance needs to uh, release Israeli uh, hostages. That's right? just Western neoliberal. You talking feel me? Point. It's like this. Period. Oh, this. Oh, this uh, evil of uh, Hamas, and we need to save the hostages. But these are again, these people are settlers. Let's be very clear. These people are settlers, and uh, these people that. <laughs> But were you telling people to leave beforehand? Like they had ample opportunity yeah, to ample leave. Ample time to leave. You know Some of these saying? people are in their forties. Release the grandmothers. They've been there for that long. Eighty-five years old. They've been there. How many Palestinian lives do they watch suffer on the the return from marches on Fridays and shit? Where, where was this energy at then? Straight up. Because this could have been avoided. That's what Straight people up. don't realize. This could have been avoided. These people have actual homes. But people, they have nations they can <laughs> go back to in Eastern Europe. 
Matter of fact, they have that, strong that, ties to here. They can, a lot of them is from America. That's why them, uh, America said, okay, Israelis, you can just come what in. What is it, America? You don't even, you don't even, you don't even need a visa. Come on. You got IDF soldiers on there with a pure American accent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I, I think these Western people need to stop fixing their lips and telling the axis of resistance what to do rather than supporting the, what the axis of resistance is doing. Y'all claim to love democracy. Hamas was voted in. It was democratically elected. elected to govern Gaza. Every faction of resistance, from the by Marxist millions, Leninist, by Leninists, by millions of people, that by millions of Palestinians, <laughs> Hamas was voted in. That's just these are facts. All of the factions are united. That is a democratic, right? A democratic election. They were On democratically what elected by the Palestinians, and now they're only seen as a terrorist group, not a government. So let's be real. Why are you? That's the typical American chauvinism, thinking you know better. Support what the axis of resistance is asking for. Support the Palestinian the resistance. United, United Why don't you prisoners? say free Imam Jamil al -Amin? Why don't you say free all the Palestinian political prisoners and prisoners of war? Why aren't you calling for the uh, freedom of all political prisoners, new African political prisoners and prisoners of war here in this, inside of the belly of the beast? But you're fixing your lips to talk about Hamas. You're fixing your lips talking about, oh, we're, we need to do this for humanitarian things, humanitarian reasons. What are you talking about? First and foremost, look at the, how uh, Hamas has actually tried to release uh, people that were taken captive, settlers that were taken captive. Look at how they have tried to release them, but these Zionists don't even care about their own people. You feel me? You see the video of the 85-year-old woman. She shakes, their, uh, shakes one of Hamas's hands. Said... Thank you. And then she was asked about it. So, yeah, they treated me humanely. I mean, so, again, this is why Israel is in, the Zionist regime is in such a crisis. They're losing the public media war. Their own people are saying, oh, yeah, Israel didn't do nothing. IDF, My, IDF didn't do nothing. The IDF IDF was hiding was behind us. So all these claims that these Israelis be making is actually the things they're doing. They're the ones killing thousands of children. They're the ones who are killing uh, their own people. They're the ones who are beheading babies. They're the ones that are bombing hospitals. But in typical Zionist form, in typical trickery, they like to blame the person they're doing it to. Right. And then they use the media. But that's the MO of these Zionists. This is the, uh, the satanic evil element of these Zionists. All right? So I think we've given a, a good episode so far in terms of giving a historical analysis of the situation that is going on. And I think one thing we see a lot of is people, you know, rightfully so, being in the streets, uh, talking about the freedom for Palestine. That's yeah, yeah. what most, that must happen. Uh, that, we, that must happen. Yeah. And we must show our solidarity in the streets. But what is that process? You know what I'm saying? Like, so what can we as an organization do, as a community do, uh, to support the Palestinians' fight against the unjust Western settler colonial state of Israel? I would say the only thing that's missing and which is a key element is delivering an economic blow to the Western imperialist powers. But ultimately, like you named earlier in the episode, all of this comes down to international finance capital, right? The ability to make money all across the world, the ability to uh, control and dictate markets all across the world. That's what this comes down to, right? Like uh, in addition to the war on Islam, in my personal opinion, uh, the historical role of the war of uh Euro-Americans uh, fight against Islam. That's my personal opinion, uh, in addition to the need to establish and control uh, international finance capital, right? This Those is are some so, historical facts. <laughs> <laughs> this, is what, so this is what I would say yeah. is needed. We need to deliver that effective economic blow because how do Saturday and how do weekend protests, and a lot of these protests have been going on daily, right? But how is this really interrupting uh, the ability for these corporations and these institutions to make money. It, it really isn't. I think we maybe spoke about this on the last episode, but I know we spoke about it in Kadra, where it's mm -hmm. like, um, you know, not to the same scale, but even if we use the civil rights movement, for example, in the uh, Alabama bus boycotts, like, it was a lot of mm -hmm. black workers who were catching that bus, and when they stopped catching the bus, it cost the state money. Hey. I mean, and there is the, you know, the BDS movement, right? Yeah. About uh, boycott, divest, and sanction. But can you talk a little more about what you mean, right? Around like the economic and like yeah. furthering upon that? Yeah, we, we need to deliver an economic blow 
to where uh, it's not just, I, I think this in collaboration with the mass, uh, the mass discontent, discontent, the uh, shows of solidarity across different ethnic and national groups to philosophically, morally stand against the unjust occupation and settler colonial state of Israel, that in collaboration with uh, not listening to these Zionist music, right? Like they making money off us every day we listen to iTunes. Zionists make money off of that. They making money off of us every day we streaming Netflix, we streaming Amazon, we streaming Prime or Prime, we streaming Max. Like they making money off of this. They making money when we go into their grocery stores. You go to the protest and you leave and then you uh, contribute financially to the money that will ultimately go on into being these uh, aid packages, right? Um, and I think we're a ways from that just because of the lack of uh, organization. If you look at, um, let's say, like some of the anti-war movements of like Vietnam, for example, think about how many organizations were birthed or in that time period, mm. how many organizations were able to uh, lead and I would say direct that revolutionary fervor uh, from the protest to some type of program, right? George Jackson talks about that in Soledad, brother. Uh, so I personally think we just a ways from that based off the lack of organization. Um, but, you know, I do think I see what's going on as, as a pivotal moment. And I think organizations to, should take uh, advantage of this um, raise in consciousness and funneling into direct programming. If not, we'll get the same situation where the genocide will continue. We'll, con we'll be able to see what we saw from 2020 to 2023, where you have mass protests and de calls for defunding police and what has happened? Every year, the pigs have killed more people. Who about to watch Cop City be built in the midst of a coming off of a, a defund police yeah. movement? Right? Uh, we talking about Cop City, the cop. Uh, oh, I guess like the smaller Cop City, the Cop City communal that's being built in San Pablo. Right? Um, these are a byproduct of organizations, the lack of properly organized people um, being able to take advantage of revolutionary mm -hmm. fervor and direct these people. Uh, to very tangible things. To very tangible things. And so I think a big part of this is community education, right? If you look at any um, liberational liberation project, whether it be a communal or national scale, it's being able to uh, properly educate the people on historical development and the contemporary manifestations of that historical uh, phenomena and then being able to make sense of it and define it and realize the role that they play in establishing it and the role that they can play in delegitimizing it and ultimately uh, eradicating it, right? So we need community education around Palestine, especially with all, like you alluded to, all the misinformation that's being out there, which is why we'll be doing a community learning next week, right? It's part of that dialectic, uh, that part of that process, that scientific process that community learning in collaboration with the programs that will be held that week and the days to follow. Um, and I don't think we need to have like that, what they call like a Fabian approach where, you know, they be like, uh, I think it's a lot what, li what liberals do, and neoliberals do, where they say, oh, it take time, it take time. But we do need to be committed to protracted struggle. There are things we can do right away in terms of educating and programs that actually meet the people needs so that we can have a material base to deliver economic blow to where I can tell you, look it. Well, the let's Israeli say, ship is not being docked in Oakland. Kaiser workers do not go to work today. We shutting this hospital down. But, and if you need help, if the community, if you need help, come to people's, Oakland, come to people's programs, uh, mobile health clinic, or come to people's programs, uh, warehouse or whatever, and we got doctors there from Kaiser that's going to be supplying y'all. You feel me? Uh, teachers, one school, don't go to school today. Parents, the teachers from this school and the parents from this school don't go to work. Students don't go to don't go to class. We got these different community centers we partner with. Y'all come here, right? These are like actual tangible ways that disrupt the economics and the ecosystems of nations, mm -hmm. of cities, right? Especially us in California, if we can start to really dismantle that, this is how Gavin Newsom. How the hell he gonna go to Israel? You feel me? Like this is the type of economic and material blow we have to we have to deliver, uh, because if not. You know, I would say imperialism. You talked about you talked about being an octopus, right? And all these different tentacles. And I also say that imperialism has the ability to like uh, regenerate and self heal itself. You feel me? Like if you stab at one place, it, it's going shit. Heal itself. It's going to heal right itself up. up, right? Stab it again, heal itself up. And so we need to be able to really deliver that blow where you can do what you always allude to and what George Jackson alludes to and like cut it off at his head. And I believe that an economic blow is essential to cutting it off at his head. And true economic blows can't happen without mass organization. And so it'd be nice to see what some of these unions, and I don't know what some of these unions and shit is doing right now. I can't, you know, um, but like you said, I didn't do more research on that, but like you said, like if a boat couldn't dock here, 
if people wasn't going to school. Things like that have happened. If we you know shut down saying? a department at a uh, Kaiser the radiology mm-hmm. department, but you can still come get your X-ray here. So or they niggas ain't making their money, but people still getting the services. These are like. Oh, we tied to the Thirteenth Amendment. That's keeping in, uh, people enslaved through the prison industrial complex. The prison industrial complex that is forcing people who is locked up to make goods for the military, like these corporations that are uh, supplying weapons yeah. to Israel. Right. We need to yeah have that that mass blow in. Uh, Organize around those tangible things and have revolutionary organizations that is committed to that first word revolution not reform Right because there ain't no reform in Israel It's one Palestine. Yeah Right, so yeah. ultimately we got to build these programs in the community uh, to be a vessel To be an offensive vessel for decolonization to mobilize the people around concrete uh, tangible uh, Objectives you feel me and show people that hey we can win yeah, because I, what I recognize at some of these protests, there are, um, I would say, like clusters of organizations, mm. right? Um, but like, we're we won't be as strong until we're all together. Like, there's not a single organization that's just bringing all the people out, right? Like, we won't. We need coalition building to actually have a real mm-hmm. impact on what's going on. Uh, if not, you just keep getting kind of just like, I would akin it's like anarchy. Where you have all these different folks coming in with their kind of own objectives, and until you bind it by an ideology, which we all claim to be like an anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist ideology, mm-hmm. and then you got to have an actual program to it. Like what, what has happened post? Like what groups have we worked with post your speech? I don't know what groups these program. I don't know what programs these groups have, but like I know what programs we have to where like these people can actually come and talk to whole projects that we deal with. Whole schools that we deal with, you know what I'm saying? But the imperialists show us all they do is click up, all they do is sit down at the round table and break bread and figure out who gonna get the concession here. They yeah. uh, they align on things, and uh, we need to follow the formula because it works. And that's just my uh, opinion based on you know history. Yeah, free the people, free the land. From Oakland to Gaza, man, free it all, free all political prisoners, free all prisoners of war. Free all new African political prisoners of war. Free all Palestinian political prisoners of war. Free the land.